To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. We saw a simple problem on consignment accounting and before we move ahead to solve more problems, let us understand the concept of normal loss and abnormal loss. Now this is not very different from what you have already learnt in the inventory chapter. The concept remains the same, accounting treatment by and large remains the same. We will specifically understand how do we treat normal loss and how do we treat abnormal loss in consignment accounting. To quickly recap, what is a normal loss? A normal loss is a loss that is unavoidable. Say for example, there is one Mr. A who sells milk. He sends tank lorries of milk to different places. So on one fine day, he sent 1000 liters of milk in a tank lorry from his location to another location. Now during the journey, there could be some spillage, there could be some loss due to evaporation, there could be some loss while loading, while unloading. These are the various losses which cannot be avoided. These kind of losses are called normal loss. Any loss which is beyond the normal loss is called as abnormal loss. So let us say in the milk industry, 1% of loss is considered as normal loss. So when Mr. A transported 1000 liters of milk, 10 liters of milk which is lost during the transit or on way will be considered as normal loss. But in the transit or during the journey, if someone stole milk and Mr. B ended up getting only 950 liters of milk, what is the total loss? A sent 1000, B received 950. So there is a total loss of 50 out of which 1% that is 10 liters will be considered as normal and balance 40 liters of milk will be considered as abnormal loss. So it is very important to understand what is a normal loss, what is an abnormal loss because accounting treatment of these two losses will be different. So let us understand the accounting of normal loss and abnormal loss using an example. Say there is one consigner Mr. A who has sent 100 units at the rate of rupees 10 means costing rupees 10 to Mr. B the consignee. So how many units have been sent? 100 units have been sent. What is the rate? 10 rupees is the rate per unit. So total value of goods sent is 1000 rupees. This is what has been sent to B. Now in the business in which Mr. A is, there is a chance of normal loss of 5%. So generally what is the loss? There is a loss of 5%. If 5% is the loss on 100 quantity, 5 units will be lost. So this is what is the normal loss. Now when A was sending this material, he was already aware that B will be receiving only 95 units. So this entire cost of 1000 rupees will be spread across 95 units means now we will consider that cost of 95 units is itself 1000 rupees. It is not a cost of 100 units is 1000 and 5 is lost and we will consider the cost of 95 units as 950. That is not the case. Whenever there is a normal loss, whatever is the normal loss, even that part is considered as cost of the balance or the remaining items. So in this case, whatever the 5 units we lost, we will consider that we have lost 0 and that part of cost will be loaded onto other units. So in this case, out of 100, 5 was lost normally, which means 95 is what is normally expected to be received. The cost of this 95 units will be considered as 1000. The cost of this 95 units will be considered as 1000 rupees. So you are actually including the normal loss as a part of your inventory. You are not saying that I have lost it and I will value the 95 units at 950. That is not what we are saying. The value of the 95 units will now become 1000 rupees. So now what is the cost per unit? Let us do the computation. So 1000 divided by 95. 10.526, I am rounding off to 3 digits, 10.526, so cost per unit becomes 10.526 and Mr. A would have decided the selling price considering 10.526 to be the cost per unit. Now friends, whenever there is transportation incurred, whenever there is a freight incurred, even that will be loaded on the balance units. But imagine Mr. B received only 85 units. Mr. B received only 85 units. Now 100 units were sent, 85 units were received. What is the loss? The total loss is 15 units out of which 5 units is the normal loss and the balance 10 units, the balance 10 units will be considered as abnormal 
loss balance 10 units will be considered as abnormal loss now you may have a doubt do i spread the cost of 1000 over 85 units or 95 units friends if you remember whatever you have learnt in the inventory chapter normal loss will form part of inventory the cost of normal loss will be included in the cost of inventory but any abnormal loss will not be included in the cost of inventory so for valuing inventory for computing the cost of goods you will include only the normal loss now what happens to this abnormal loss we lost 10 units which was an abnormal loss what is the rate per unit the rate per unit is 10.526 so if you apply 10.526 you get a cost of rupees 105.2 Six. Now, this is the abnormal loss. This abnormal loss will be debited to the profit and loss account. Now, what will happen in the consignment account? We will understand it by drawing a separate account. But this loss 105.26 will be debited to the profit and loss account. What are the good units that has been received? 85 have been received at the cost of 10.526 into 85 will make it 894.74 894.74 is what has been received by the consignee now friends if you analyze this table total cost was 1000 out of which abnormal loss is 105.26 no goods which have been received by the consignee the value of the goods is 894.74 if you sum this up it adds up to thousand rupees so in a nutshell if i have to summarize normal loss will be included as a part of inventory or as a cost of inventory or it will be loaded on the balance items and how do we do that total cost divided by number of units which is expected to be received you will remove the normal loss quantity and own over the balance quantity you will spread the total cost but if there is any abnormal loss you will not include that abnormal loss as a part of cost of inventory you will debit that separately to the profit and loss account now in this example if you see you had a total cost of thousand there was a normal loss which we ignored and we hence we divided thousand by 95 100 was the total cent 5 was the normal loss and we divided 1000 by 95 to get a per unit cost of 10.526 this 10.526 will be used to value the inventory will be used to value the abnormal loss and if there is any abnormal loss that will be transferred to the profit and loss account to continue the same example let us now assume that the consignee mr b he sold 80 goods to the third parties now what was sent 100 was sent, 5 was normal loss, 10 was abnormal loss and 80 is sold to third parties which means he still has an inventory of 5. Now if he has sold 80, he has already sold 80, what is the closing inventory? Closing inventory is 5. How should I value this closing inventory? Should I say 5 into 10 or 5 into 10.526? Friends, because normal loss should be considered as a part of closing inventory or as a part of cost of inventory, we will value this 5 units at 10.526. So, what is the rate that will apply? Rupees 10.526 and what is the total value? 5 into 10.526 makes it 52.63. So, total value of closing inventory is 52.63. This is the inventory at right now when we come to consignment account let us try to plot these entries now i have not given what is the value at which the goods have been sold let us assume for now that the goods have been sold at 11 rupees per unit so if the goods have been sold at 11 rupees per unit the total sales that will come is rupees 880 so you have sold the total value of goods that has been sold is 880 now we'll plot these numbers in the consignment account and see how does it look if you go to consignment account, first entry is to goods sent on consignment. To goods sent on consignment. What is the value? The value is 1000. The next item is sales. And when the sales happen, you will debit the consignee. So, by consignee here, it is Mr. B. So, this consignment to B account. By Mr. B, 880 rupees. How many units were sold? 80 units were sold then you have a closing inventory so by inventory 
at hand how many units you had five units what is the value 52.63 this was the value of inventory at hand now friends if you see we sent a total of 100 goods he sold 80 and 5 is still lying as inventory now what happens to the 15 which is lost now that 15 has two components normal loss abnormal loss now friends whatever is the normal loss we have already loaded that on the balance good so when we computed the value of inventory we have already loaded that normal loss when we have to derive the cost of goods that we have sold even on that we have already loaded the normal loss so normal loss will not have any further treatment because it has been considered as a part of inventory but when it comes to abnormal loss we have to do some treatment now look at this number 100 is what we sent 5 we know it is anyways lost and you have 80 sales and 5 as closing inventory now is it good to compare an expense of 100 and income of 85 it is not appropriate we must compare the expense of 100 with 100 but this 100 actually for us is how much 95 because 5 is normal loss so 95 we must be comparing with 95 so 80 sold 5 is in inventory this 10 of abnormal loss we should not load the consignment account we will separately treat it under the profit and loss account so here you will say by abnormal loss you will credit the abnormal loss of 10 units so that the matching concept is followed expense of 95 income of 95 sir what happens to that 10 units it is also a loss right yes that is a loss but that loss will show it separately in the profit and loss account how do we show that what will be the entry we will understand as we do the problems so what is the abnormal loss in this case the abnormal loss in this case was 105.26 so you will have an abnormal loss of 105.26 6. So, if you just do the totaling, you have 880 plus 52.63, you can round it up to 64 plus 105.26. On one side, you have 1037.89. So, 1037.89 minus 1000. So, you have a profit of 2 profit and loss account. 37.89. Now, if you would not have considered the credit of abnormal loss, it would not have given you a clearer picture. You would have felt that the consignment is actually loss making, whereas consignment is not loss making. There was some loss in transit, there was some loss in the consignment, which we will show it separately in the PL account, will not impact the consignment account. I hope the logic of treating normal loss and abnormal loss is clear. To repeat it once again, normal loss will be considered as a part of inventory or as a cost of inventory and we will load that on the total cost. So, if you send goods for 1000 and 100 units were sent and only 95 was received, that 1000 of cost will be spread over 95 and any other expenses that you would consider as a part of inventory that will also be spread over 95 units. By arriving at the cost per unit, you will identify what is the abnormal loss. The abnormal loss will be credited to the consignment account and it will be separately debited to the profit and loss account. Now, you may have another question. Whatever the loss the consigner is incurring, whether it is normal loss or abnormal loss, both are on account of consignment. Why do we need to separately debit that to profit and loss account? Now, the reason we debit it separately to the profit and loss account is to understand what would have been the profit had this abnormal loss not been there? See, abnormal loss is not something which will happen on a daily basis. It is not that daily there will be a case of theft or it is not that the truck that we send will meet an accident every day. So, that is not the normal case, right? So, if you just remove this abnormal item, what is the profit on consignment? If we want to know that number, we will have to exclude this abnormal loss. Now, many consigners, what they do is they take something called a insurance policy. Now, what is this insurance policy? Insurance policy is nothing but there is a party called the insurer who will collect premium from a consigner or the consignee. So, either consigner or the consignee will pay a premium to this insurer or the insurance company and the insurance company agrees that in the event of any loss, I will compensate the loss. Let us say in any case when the truck was going from one place to another and the truck met with an accident and there was a lot of loss of goods, 
this insurance company will compensate that loss. Now, how much the insurance company will compensate will depend on case to case basis. But there is an agreement, there is an arrangement that a party called an insurance company will compensate the loss that is being incurred. And for this purpose, the consigner or the consignee, they will pay insurance premium. So, insurance company collects the premium and it will compensate the loss. Now, say for example, in a particular case, there was a total abnormal loss of 10,000 rupees. What is the total abnormal loss? 10,000 rupees. Now, what would you normally do to this 10,000 rupees? You will credit this to consignment account and correspondingly debit this to profit and loss account. So, 10,000 would be credited to the consignment account, 10,000 will be debited to the profit and loss account. But assume that this insurance company has agreed for a claim of 8,000. So, the total loss is 10,000. The insurance company says that I will bear 8,000 rupees. Now, in this case, what is the net loss? The net loss is only 2,000 rupees. Does it mean that I will credit the consignment account with 2,000 rupees? No. Even in this case, I will credit the consignment account with the abnormal loss amount which is 10,000 units because that is the portion of goods that was not available for sale. So, that is the amount I will credit to the consignment account while debiting to the profit and loss account I will debit only 2,000 and the balance 8,000 I will debit to the insurance company or if I have received bank I will debit to the bank. So, how will the transaction flow? When you are accounting for the loss, you will say abnormal loss account debit 10,000 to consignment account 10,000. And when you are closing this abnormal loss account, you will say profit and loss account 2,000, bank or insurance company 8,000 to abnormal loss 10,000. So, this is how you will close the entries. So, if you prepare a ledger account on one side of the abnormal loss account, you will see a debit of 10,000 and on the other side, you will see two credits, one of 8,000, another one of 2,000. 2,000 will be transferred to profit and loss account, 8,000 will be received or is receivable from the insurance company. So, this is how the accounting will be done if there is an insurance policy.